Today we're going to look at paired difference tests for dependent samples. Let's look at some examples of dependent samples. Remember, dependent samples are samples that are related to one another. There's a relationship between the two. The first example of dependent samples is before and after tests. We can take a weight loss program and check the person's weight before the program and the person's weight after the program. This is an example of dependent samples because we're talking about the same individual. They're being tested before and they're being tested after. We also have matched pair design and this is used to control the effects of other variables. For example, if I want to compare shocks, I can install one brand of each on each car and use the same type of driving mileage, etc. And after a certain amount of miles, let's say 20,000 miles, we're going to test the shocks for strength and compare the differences in strength of each shock. We need to look at some assumptions before we start the problem. The samples have to be dependent samples. Sample data are matched pairs. If the number of paired observation is less than 30, we have to check the differences for normality. If the sample size is less than 30, we have to check the differences for normality using our QQ plot and our box plot to check to make sure there's no outliers. So let's look at some notation. The mean difference of a population is mu sub d, and that's equal to the mean of the first group minus the mean of the second group. d is equal to a particular observed difference from a pair. d bar is the mean difference of the paired observations of the sample. So of all of the differences between each of the pairs, we're going to take the average. That's what d bar represents. And d bar is calculated by taking the summation or the total of all of the differences and dividing it by the number of pairs of observations. And n is our sample size. Here is our test statistic. It is t equals d bar over the standard deviation of the difference divided by the square root of the sample size. Here the degrees of freedom is still n minus 1, where the standard deviation of the difference is calculated by the square root of the summation of the differences squared minus the summation of the differences quantity squared over the number of pairs divided by the sample size minus 1. Now we don't need to use any of these formulas because we're going to use StatCrunch for every single problem from now on. If we want to calculate the confidence interval, we take the mean difference and then we add or subtract our margin of error to find the confidence interval. Note if the degrees of freedom is greater than a thousand, we will use Z instead of T because T will approach Z for very large degrees of freedom. But then again, we're going to use StatCrunch, so we don't need to worry about looking at Z or T. So let's look at example one. The following data represents the cost of a one night stay in the Hampton Inn hotels and the look into Inn hotels for a random sample of 10 cities. Tests to claim that the Hampton Inn hotels are priced differently then the La Quinta Inn hotels at the alpha equals 0.05 level of significance. Also construct a 95% confidence interval for the mean difference in price between the two hotels. The first assumption we need is we need to make sure these are dependent samples. Now they are definitely dependent because we're talking about the same cities. The cities are the same, so these are dependent samples, and they're paired with one another. They're paired with one another. This is a matched pair design since the hotel prices come from the same 10 cities. To test the hypothesis, 
we first compute the differences and then verify the differences come from a population that is approximately normally distributed with no outliers because the sample size is small. Remember, the sample size is less than 30, so we have to check for normality and make sure there's no outliers. Let's try the problem now on StackCrunch. We have to check our conditions. Uh, the first column has the Hampton Inn and the second column has the La Gunta Inn hotel prices. Now to do this problem, we'll first have to go to stat, tstat, paired, and then we will click that and make sure group 1 is Hampton, we'll make sure group 2 is La Quinta. I'm going to go down and click save the differences and then I'm just going to put compute. We'll just close this window, we don't need it right now. And you can see here it gave us a column that says differences. So what they did is they took 129 and subtracted 105 and that gives a difference of $24 in price. And they did that for each of the pairs. So the second pair is 149 minus 96, and that's how they got $53. And this is the differences between each of the hotels for each of the 10 cities. Now we're going to look at the QQ plot for the differences. So we can go to graph, scroll down the QQ plot, and click differences to check to make sure it's approximately normal. We'll compute and the graph is approximately normal because it's linear. Let's check for outliers now. I'm going to go to graph, box plot, click differences. We want the box plot for the differences in price. And let's scroll down and we'll select that we want to draw our boxes horizontally. Let's press compute. And there are no outliers in the problem, so we know the conditions are met. I want to test the claim that the Hampton Inn hotels are priced differently than the La Quinta Inn hotels at alpha equals 0.05 level significance. So before we start, I need to let the reader know which one's group 1. In this case, let's let group 1 be the Hampton Inn hotel because that came first. And group 2 will let that be the La Quinta Hotel. Then we'll start our claim. The claim is that they're priced differently. When I see the phrase differently, I know the symbol is not equals. So let's say mu1 is not equal to mu2. The complement to this is mu1. 1 is equal to mu2. Now we can start step 1. In step 1, we're going to look at the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is always the one with the equal sign, so mu1 is equal to mu2. In the alternative hypothesis, it's mu1 not equal to mu2. Now there are some notational differences. In the textbook, you'll see they'll refer to the null hypothesis as the mean difference is equal to zero and for the alternative hypothesis they'll refer to it as the mean difference is not equal to zero. But just be aware that the notation means the same thing. In step two we're going to state alpha. Alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and that is given here in the problem. In step three and four, we're going to go to StackCrunch to find those values. Let's try the problem now on StackCrunch. I have typed the data values for the Hampton Hotels and the Le Quinta Inn Hotels for two separate columns. To do this on StackCrunch, we'll go to Stats, T-Stats, and here is when we click Paired because we're doing a paired difference test. They're dependent samples. So go to stats, t-stats, paired. 
Group 1 we said was the Hampton Hotels, and Group 2 we'll say is the La Quinta Hotels. Scroll to the bottom, and we have some options here that we can select. If I want to save the differences, then I can click Differences. On some homework questions, you'll have to click this if you want to take the differences with the computer. But we're doing a hypothesis test, so we'll go down here. And remember the notation is slightly different. Instead of mu1 equals mu2, they're going to put the mean difference is equal to zero. And for the alternative, they're going to put not equals zero here. So just be aware it's going to be slightly different, but it'll mean the same thing. So let's put compute. And here is our test statistic. The T stat is 7.37 and our P value is less than 0.001. From StackRange, our test statistic is equal to 7.37. Our T statistic is 7.37. In step 4, our p-value was less than 0 0.0001. Now we can start step 5, our conclusion, I always ask, is the p-value less than alpha? Is 0 0.0001 less than 0 0.05? Yes, it is. So now we can complete part five. Step five, since the p-value is less than alpha, we do reject the null hypothesis. There is enough evidence to conclude, and remember our conclusion is always in terms of HA. Recall HA was mu1 was not equal to mu2. So there is enough evidence to conclude the hotels are priced differently. Since the p-value is less than alpha, we do reject the null hypothesis. There is enough evidence to conclude the hotels are priced differently. Now let's construct a 95% confidence interval for the mean difference. For that, we'll go to StatCrunch. Let's find our confidence interval. We will go back to our page that we did not close. We'll go to Options, Edit, and then we'll go to the bottom and click Confidence Interval. Since we want 95%, we'll put 0 0.95. Click Compute, and here is our lower limit, 38.397, and our upper limit is 72.40. So let's Go back to our problem. From StackCrunch, we have the lower limit is 38.40 and the upper limit is 72.40. Now we're rounding these values to two decimal places because we are talking about money. Now the next question that I need to ask myself is, is there a zero in the interval? Is there a zero in the interval? Since both of these numbers are positive, we know there is no zero in the interval. There is no zero in the interval. That implies there is a difference. Since both of these numbers are positive, that implies that one of the hotels is priced more expensively than the other. Recall group one was the Hampton Inn Hotel. And group two was the La Quinta Inn Hotel.
Since there is a difference, we're going to write we are 95% confident that the Hampton Hotel is more expensive by between 38 dollars and 40 cents and 72 dollars and 40 cents we are 95 percent confident that the hampton hotel is more expensive by between 38 dollars and 40 cents and 72 dollars and 40 cents